Okay, good evening everyone and welcome to September and our first committee of the meeting, or pardon me, committee of the whole meeting uh, as we kick off the final sort of few months of this year. I hope everyone had a good summer and would just like to extend a thank you to our fire crews for all of the work they're doing and keeping our community safe as well as helping others in the interior and beyond. Uh, I'd like to sh give a thank you also to counselors that covered off for me while I was either at UBCM or away. So that would be Councillor Casper at the Regional District Board and both Councillor Loggins and Councillor Parkinson. So thank you very much. Uh, I do have a, I actually have vacation coming up next week. So Councillor Casper will be attending the Regional Board for me and Councillor Parkinson is acting mayor for September and will handle things in the few days that I am away. So um, what staff have been busy doing, I'd also like to welcome back our CAO, Ms. Sullivan, and also to give thanks to Mr. Blackhall for holding down the fort while Ms. Sullivan was off and extend a warm welcome to Ms. Mushada in the back there. Welcome to Souk. And uh, all the staff are pitching in and helping out. It's muchly appreciated. So what we're doing right now um, with the Committee of the Whole, because the upcoming meetings are going to be very busy, we have a regular meeting next week and a special meeting scheduled for the third Monday of September because then the following week we're off at UBCM and then October the regular meeting schedule uh, will continue on from there. But it was timely for us to sort of look at our priorities and any outstanding resolutions and where they are at. So there's quite a lengthy report here um, where you can see that staff have put this all together for us. So we'll get going here. So I'd like first an approval of the agenda please for our September 5th Committee of the Whole as presented. Moved move by Councillor Pearson. Any questions on it? Councillor Pearson. Yes. Thank you. Mayor Tim. I'd like to add a new business to the uh, Committee of the Whole at the Somewhere in there, if we have an opportunity tonight. We do, yeah, under item five. Under uh, item five. So the new business I'd like to add is the discussion around um, the release of the Atlantic salmon from the uh, fish farm in Puget Sound. Okay. Thank you. And since we are in committee of the whole, there's no seconder required. So that will just go on to the agenda as it's been moved. Anything else from anyone? See none, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Opposed, motions carried. Okay, so what we'll do um, with, we have just the one item to report on, and then maybe, let's see, at 7 o'clock, maybe what we can do is say at um, 8 o'clock or 7, let me think here, about 7.50-ish is just see if there's any public input on the first part. Maybe that would be helpful so that you don't, our intent is to get through this in a reasonable time frame, but the public might not be able to sit through the whole thing, so that way we can welcome some input in partway through, if that works for everyone here. Very good. Okay, so we will carry on, and I will turn this over to staff, please, if you could introduce the report, please, uh, to our CAO, and then we can go through it and then have a discussion about it. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Your Worship, and to the rest of Council. Uh, uh, staff thought it was timely that we take a look at the work that's been done by this Council since your election. In November of 2014, uh, as you can see in the report, we've had a very, very busy three years with 359 resolutions passed uh, by this Council. Uh, these resolutions do not include first, second readings, basic follow-up items, and writing letters on behalf of Mayor and Council, which we consider to be operational in nature. These resolutions all have uh, an effect on staff time and budget resources. In addition to this, we have had 2017 Council Strategic Plan. Um, of which we were looking for some direction on. There's about 59 strategic priorities for this council. And so moving into the next year or so, staff are hoping that council can provide us with some uh, focused direction on what you would like to see accomplished over the next year or so. 
Um, and to that end, we have streamlined our tracking processes. We've taken a number of tracking lists, put them into one, uh, of which you, are, uh, you all have a copy of, as does the public. Uh, there are some 52 outstanding or active uh, resolutions that we are asking Council to let us know what your priorities are in addition to your strategic plans. So, um, at the end of the conversation or as we move through this fall, uh, staff are going to be asking Council to, to take a look at some fairly large di um, discussion decision items, one being our sewers. Uh, we're at near capacity, it's no surprise to anyone. Staff need direction from Council now in order to start making decisions or start making plans uh, for expansion and growth, economic development in our community. So we need decisions this fall in order for us to prepare for where we want to go in two years. The other large items that uh, we need direction from staff are with respect to the conditions of our roads. We've got a draft assessment report and it looks as though uh, we need to focus uh, some conversations in October on the condition of our roads and our priorities moving forward over the next five years. Uh, staff are also, as you recall, last fiscal or last year, our director of finance moved out our five-year uh, plan, our financial plan, and staff are now um, taking a look at planning five years out, both uh, resources, budgetary, staffing requirements as we continue to grow as a community. Uh, so with that backdrop, uh, staff are asking for Council's um, consideration with respect to priorities and would like to know how you would like to proceed with the conversation. Thank you. Okay, so we have, uh, thank you for that intro there, and we have the report in front of us. And so in order to move through this in a timely manner, any ideas on how you would like to tackle this? Councillor Ray, then Parkinson. Uh, yes, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, one of the things that I noted um, as we went through it, the, um, the assigned areas are Development Sur Services Corporate and Finance. And I'm just wondering if um, uh, try to prior prior prioritize within those three like, for example, finance only has three items on here. Given its finance and budget, we might want to look at doing something in that area first and then looking at the other two areas. Okay, that's a good idea. Okay. Councillor Parkinson? I would like to see us go through each one individually. Okay, Councillor Loggins? Um, I don't know about uh, going through the assigned column. Maybe uh, we could put that through to our staff and see if that would work, just because um, they, of course, have other things going on, but um, I don't know, it might work. Um, one thing I was thinking is if we can just, like, I've, I've gone through these uh, in depth, and there are some that I'm thinking, okay, we can get rid of that, we can get rid of that, or that's moved forward, and, um, <clears throat> and some of them are priorities to me, and I think it would be nice to go through um, either tonight or, or come back and talk about what our uh, what we see as priorities moving forward into the next uh, year and a bit, and also how they do or don't match up with our strategic plan. So I think we need to make sure that any priorities, um, if we do choose to make priorities out of these, how they align with our overall goals as a district. Okay, I think it may be like just try. Let's just go through them. Let's start that and and just see obviously if council needs more information we don't have to get into a lengthy discussion on this but if there's something that you're needing some of them are in progress and then we can just let's just let's start it and see how it flows how's that if our mayor worship um, please remember that these are resolutions of council council's already considered them they've already had staff reports done and so what we're asking for is council's uh, reconsideration of these resolutions given the five strategic goals that we have up here on the board or on the wall for you all 
Um, to ask for additional information just means that we're going to delay a decision. And that's okay if you want to delay the decision, but we are heading into getting our budget finalized by December 31st this year. And so really what we are taking a look at, maybe not decisions tonight, as Councillor Logan said, but let's go through them one at a time. Um, and we're not looking for direction tonight, but if you want to come back at a special meeting or a different meeting, once you've had an opportunity to go through them, had a little bit of a discussion here and then come back, that's perfectly okay with us as well. Okay. All right, let's just hit it. Okay, number one, renaming of Cooper's Cove. It's... Well, no, you have to turn on your microphone and tell me something because I don't know what the code is. <laughs> Councillor Parkinson. <laughs> Sorry. So it appears that this has already been completed. It says that the mapping has been changed to reflect Cooper's Cove, but I don't know if a new sign has been put up. I haven't noticed that. that Brenda. No. If you take a look at the comments section to your far right, right. is that... Um, mm -hmm. uh, the mapping. Oh, that's what you're looking at, sorry. Mm -hmm. My apology. That's me. The request has been made to the province. We've not seen an update. So I imagine it's just in the queue. With the province. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I think we're good. Councillor Parkinson. I was going to say, do we not put up our own park signs? Which we have on every park in the district. This is a street name. You're, you're, excuse me, Your Worship. Uh, yeah, the, the, the mapping internally has been changed and the uh, province has not. I'm not sure if a new sign has been placed up to reflect the, uh, right. the change in the name, but I will check on that and I can report back on that. Okay, so I think it's just if um, we can have this refreshed, I mean, really, it's just a case of getting a sign. So if it needs a sign, just put it up and then we add the comment and we're good. So we actually don't need a report back. I think it's just this resolution part. You know, maybe in six months' time, we can have it refreshed, and then it's like, sign installed, done. Sound good? Good. Okay, good. <laughs> Number two. <laughs> okay, so there's uh, sponsorships, um, a policy. It looks like uh, there's a language, there's something drafted here in the community grant policy. It's an amendment, and it'll come back to council for further discussion. So it looks like that just needs to hit an upcoming meeting. That's how I read that. Uh, so. Staff are recommending that we don't do a separate policy. Yep. Um, okay, we're, we're clear on that? So yeah, it's going to be just part of amendment. the community grant policy? Yeah. Okay. Good. So this will kick off um, later on this year. So when we get to that portion and once through the budget, we know what we're going to allocate, we advertise out, we can have it. A, it's just amendment. So we'll look for that, to that a little bit later. Okay. The mon we're having a technical issue for the monitors and they're not working this evening, but there is a report uh, that's within the, within the papers, if I'm not mistaken. The font's really small, let's see. Yeah. We have a spare copy. Well, we can send that back, and then you can read that. This is the exact same materials that uh, is in the green pages. We're on number three. Okay, we'll move along here. Um, use of Cooper's Cove Highway right-of-way for park purposes. And so this looks like it's, there's still some ongoing work with, between our staff, the CRD, and the MOTI on this item here. So we'll just wait for more information to come back from those entities ongoing. Four, Mayor's Public, Beauty, Public Advisory Panel Arts and Beautification. It was about getting some signage done, but the grant was not received and the project was halted. Councillor Parkinson? So I, I would think that this one can be removed because we do not, no longer have this committee. And um, I've been on the committee for a number of years, and there was no grant that we applied for. We were doing the signs, and 
we have ours up, but for the First Nations, we, are, we don't have the information that we require. So okay. the signs are downstairs with but the pictures. They just need to be installed? It needs the write-up for which, like the heron. And then in the First Na South Nation language, it would say what it is. Okay. So we were waiting for that. But the signs are downstairs with the pictures on them. So really, it'd be nice to look for a grant opportunity. They only, yeah, they only cost like 20 bucks each. Oh. We're just waiting for the information. That was it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, if we have them all sitting downstairs, though, like when we want to get them up. But don't we, we sh it just feels like we should finish it. We could put them up without the information on them. Just the pictures, because we what we did was we sent out for an artist to paint the the pictures. So Michelle Drochet did the one for um, our language, I guess, and then we had a First Nation artist do the other ones. So everything's been completed. The information is not here, and w we looked it up to put the information on, but we can't put that on without their approval. Okay, so maybe we can just follow up perhaps on the side. It just seems if we have them and there are, they should be installed on the boardwalk. Sure. Pardon? I think what Councillor Parkinson is saying is that we can't complete the works until we hear back from South Nation and we've not heard back yet. So we can certainly try to follow up with yep. the South Nation, but as so far as Councillor Parkinson's concerned, I think what I heard her say is we can take it off the list. Okay, so just follow up with the so do we, I, I'm stuck. Do we follow up or do we not? It, Staff can certainly try to follow up. I just think there they're, they're, they're there, they're, they're done. We should finish it off. Okay. Uh, 6527 Souk Road, development permit, development variance permit. Uh, files on hold pending further from the applicant. So we're good. We're waiting for the applicant. Is that good for everyone? Uh, proposed uh, 2016 outstanding B3 something, Souk Zoning Bylaw proposed amendments. And this is waiting on, okay. The action is that staff look at including consistency and permitted uses throughout the commercial zones in the next zoning bylaw review. OCP bylaw needs to be done first before the bylaw review. Staff are, however, can undertaking a review of commercial kitchens. So this has to do with home-based businesses having the use to convert a suite into a, into a secondary kitchen, if I'm not mistaken. So the OCP review is ongoing, and then, uh, yeah, I think we just like to get that staff report. Yes, Your Worship. Uh, originally, we were going to wait for the OCP to be reviewed, but uh, because of the delay in the OCP, we're moving forward with researching the ability to have secondary or two kitchens in the dwelling, and we'll bring forward a report. Okay, good. We'll look forward to that. Councillor Casper? Yes, and also um, that if there were lesser lesser um, uses or uses that were in a C1 zone all the way up to a C4 zone, that those uses that are in the, the uh, lower impact zones would be permitted in the other zones. Because we talked about the fact that our our commercial zoning bylaws too compartmentalized and and you've got different zones that that really don't make any sense by being different in each of the categories when they're not going to have any negative impact if it's if it's a C1 zone uh, use and the people have a C3 zone like retail or you know something along those lines like we had a big discussion about it yeah. and it, it just didn't seem to make sense because it just showed that our zoning bylaw actually was impeding business as a whole because we've got four categories and somebody in one zone wasn't allowed to do something another they had to rezone their property for one stupid little thing whether it was a retail component or selling furniture or mending 
uh, curtains or whatever, it wasn't permitted in a different zone. And, and if I may, uh, Councillor Casper, through your worship, uh, we've heard the, the feedback from Council loud and clear, and when we go through that zoning bylaw, we certainly take that into consideration, absolutely. Yeah. Councillor Pearson, did you have something you wanted to add? No, it, that's exactly what the intent of that discussion, because it says C1 to C4, so the, so the notion that we were trying to create is, is that if it's permitted in C1, it would be automatically included in C2, C3, and C4. It goes uphill, but not downhill, because the. Okay. 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 We're good. Okay. Uh, item two: the Gateway to Souk project. Um, I think it's been put on hold. Does anyone know, Councillor Parkinson? Through your worship, I was just wondering if Councillor Pearson has heard anything from being on the museum committee. When I talked to the Lions member, they stated that they weren't going to be doing this project and they were going to be doing something at the museum instead. Uh, tomorrow night there's a museum meeting, so I'll be there. I'll bring it up. Thank you. Okay, so I think this can... On hold for more information from the Lions Club through okay. Councillor Pearson. Thank you. Okay, we have um, item three. We talked about the firearms bylaw earlier in the year. Um, and then there was a number of discussions about that. So, and that the report include amendments. I thought it was we were waiting for something to come back. Here it says requires council direction. We, I don't uh, think we adopted the bylaw. You didn't. Okay. Uh, or, sorry, through your worship, or your worship, a uh, uh, number of bylaws and different iterations of the bylaw have been in front of this mayor and council, and uh, to date we have not had direction from council with respect to the bylaw. So we can certainly bring it back for um, discussion at a future council meeting, or if there are specific changes, various councillors wants a, a, a staff to include in this bylaw, then please let us know. It's it's one of these things that are outstanding. Right. Um, and that we caught in our in our streamlined resolution tracking process. Councillor Pearson, then Parkinson. Yes, through the chair to our CAO. There was a very comprehensive rewrite of the bylaw that came to us from our uh, deputy corporate officer, I think. And um, there was some complex proposals within that. So the bylaw itself became more owners, I think we were looked at it sort of in general. So I think it was, we wanted it to come back again, but streamlined is what if I can remember. It was, it was a great bylaw, but very complex. When we already have a number of regulations, uh, the Fish and Wildlife Act, there's, and there's the, there's a number of things that we're, we're trying to sort of rewrite things that are provincially mandated. So uh, yeah, yeah. I would, I would be happy if we dropped this off here actually. Oh, well. I'm always happy to hear that from a councillor. Um, no, with all due respect to Councillor Pearson, you're absolutely right. Um, I think a lot of the conversation was, was around council's questions with respect to whether or not we really have to have a bylaw for this because we have provincial statute that covers um, uh, what the district was intending to do with this bylaw anyway. You might recall that... Um, Director Hicks brought this forward last spring, I believe in spring 2016, for uh, this council to consider doing something similar. Uh, and we've kind of gone around the circle since then. So if council's happy with um, following provincial uh, legislation uh, and what's in that provincial legislation, then we, we can um, take this one off our list. Just for clarity, Councillor Parkinson, then back to Ray, then to Pearson. Go ahead, Councillor. Through Parkinson. your worship, um, I do not believe that this should be taken off because I do not believe that bow hunting should be allowed within our municipality. We've had deer running around in down on Whiffin Spit with arrows in them, and there, the woman who wrote about this was because people were shooting or firing the arrows on property right on Whiffin Spit Road, and fearful for their children getting hit by arrows. So. You know, if you have property on the outside, whatever, fine. But within our municipality, I do not believe that you should be able to shoot bows. 
Councillor Ray, then Pearson. Uh, yes, thank you, Your Worship. If my recollection uh, is correct, um, it had started with Director Hicks asking us to add something into the current bylaw uh, for um, hunting uh, the geese. And from that, it grew in terms of, because it, it happened at the same time the letter came in from this lady. So there were a couple of motions, but that's where it started, was with the Director Hicks, and then sort of we took it to the next step with this lady's letter. So um, I, I guess I'm reluctant to take it off. I, I think we need to resolve it one way or another. Um, and uh, I, I'm not sure how much agreement you're going to get at this table on that. That's a challenge with respect to where staff sit and needing council direction because we, um, we, we have put a couple of versions of this bylaw in front of council and we can't seem to get agreement. Uh, so we can certainly keep it on the list of bylaws to review as we continue to review all of our bylaws. Um, and remember, the, the purpose of this exercise is to get priorities from council for the next 13 months. So if we can keep it into that context, then uh, we'll keep it on the list and see where it shakes out at the end. Councillor Pearson? Yeah, I have, I have no issue with uh, leaving it on because I think the intent was, was started with the correspondence from the individual and then Director Hicks challenged us to what we were actually passing because there, there's a control of a nuisance that's also mixed in there and if we would have passed our bylaw we would have rendered that, that uh, call ineffective, they wouldn't have been able to do it in our municipality. So there's a there's a, it's, it's it's quite complex. I think it needs to go back to the drawing board I, and, and I, whatever council wishes. It's just that what we were trying to rewrite where there's a whole bunch of regulations in place, distances from homes. There's a bunch of there, there's also some loopholes in the regulations um, down in the Whiff and Spit area where the where and I won't name the the area, but um, there's there's some loopholes where people were hired to take care of certain things and, and, and it gets out of control. And the province is the, is the jurisdiction that actually controls all of this when we, when we looked into this more. So anyways, if people want to leave it on, I'm fine with leaving it on. I just think that it's going to be one of those things that it'll be a, around and around and around. We'll be back to square one again all the time. Thank you. Well, I think it remains on the list. And then when it comes back, then we vote accordingly. And then it either passes or it fails. Councillor Casper. So um, I, I would suggest that if, when it does come back, we have two elements that are amendments to the bylaw. One is dealing with the bow hunting issue. The other is dealing with the um, provisions for allowing the culling of geese. And let the chips fall separately on those two issues. And uh, otherwise, the way it was before, it just got way bigger than what we'd originally envisioned. And I think that's what helped create the problems. Good. Does that work? Perfect. Okay. Uh, we have a recommendation from the Climate Action Committee from March of 2016. Moved and seconded to direct staff to investigate opportunities for local yard waste composting facilities and or programs. And staff is checking with staff. Thank you, Your Worship. We've done some uh, looking into it, but unfortunately this year with other priorities, we've had to put it aside. We just haven't had the ability to get right into it. Uh, plus the fact that uh, we'd like a little bit more deliberation from Council, or direction from Council, specifically what you're looking for with regards to this. I mean, we can do research, et cetera, with regards to opportunities for local yard wasting and composting facilities, uh, but uh, just a little... Uh, bringing some finality from council with regards to what is it specifically that you're looking for. Councillor Loggins. Um, thanks. I was on the Climate Action Change, the Change Action Committee. It was actually pretty good a committee to be on. Um, but I think this is just an idea that came up and it was more investigate it and see what's out there, see if it's something we could implement um, now or in the future. And... Uh, and our staff uh, seem to be pretty excited and knowledgeable about that, so just digging a bit deeper into it. Um, I don't think this is a priority, but to just have it in our back pocket as something to think about if the opportunity arises, I think that would work. Um, it was an opportunity to, I know there was another, which one is this for? Um, 
in our 2016 outstanding number 11 was the composting facility um, use, utilizing biosolids and yard waste. I have a feeling that these things were connected for some reason and I could totally be wrong um, but I just see the budget to 2018 50,000 and I remember one of the discussions that we had about the composting facility was that it would be an opportunity for um, the district to actually make money just wanted to throw that out there but so maybe just uh, do more to add to that mr. Howard uh, yeah thank you that's a, brings a little more clarity it also uh, can be wrapped up in our dialogue with regards to uh, the issue with, with regards to the sewer extension and what yeah. we're going to do with waste as well thank you okay councillor Casper yeah I, I'm I, I'm not in favor of the district getting wrapped up in these types of services uh, mainly because um, as far as biosolids are concerned, it's uh, it's federally or sorry provincially regulated. Uh, the regional district is currently looking at the whole issue of biosolids and what they plan on doing with it region wide, and the province is mandated um, the capital regional district to have something in place uh, by 219, correct? And so. Um, but but I just I think you know we, we have waste haulers that are hauling um, uh, compostable material. Pe people can make a choice to compost at home. Um, I I just think that 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 it may be an extra burden on our taxpayers to pay for something that perhaps they don't really have to pay for when when it should be user pay driven. And it's like you want to take your compost to Heartland Road or wherever you go, you pay a fee. You want to do it at home, you do it for free. Um, I don't think our taxpayers should be saddled with additional burden. That's why we're not in the waste collection business as a municipality, because people want consumer choice. They can, they can phone up three contractors of their choice and get the service they want. Um, it's not cheap for municipalities to get into this type of business because then we assume all the responsibility on disposing of the material. So I just say that as a, a caution. And yes. I, I'm not saying that the intention isn't right, but I just think that we have to do this with eyes wide open. So probably, thank you for that, Councillor Casper, probably since those discussion had occurred, there has been a lot of movement at the CRD because the main thing was the sewer um, wastewater treatment has been ratified. Now they're moving through that process in terms of all the waste that's collected, and it's exactly as Councillor Casper said, with the biosolids, the other forms of waste, compost and the like, it's all being dealt with through the Integrated Resource Advisory Committee, one that I actually chair, so I'm quite familiar with it. Uh, in that regard, in terms of, um, we have a few on the next page, so it kind of all ties together about pivotal IRM, advanced gasification of waste, and then that's number seven and number 11. The challenge is, is that Souk doesn't have enough stock to run something like this and to make it viable, and actually they're looking at what the CRD produces in its area itself and whether there's a suitable amount of feedstock. So that's what will come out through that process. But as a municipal, if you take even our biosolids and our waste and everything, there's not enough. It, there's no, so that's why it hasn't happened. We're too small of a community. And so I think Pivotal might be bidding on uh, or maybe has certainly has the opportunity to bid on what the CRD as a whole will do. And in that case, we would be participating in that regard, mainly with our biosolids and whatever. And then it's up to the private haulers whether they haul to Heartland or not, because not all private haulers use Heartland. And so that's also, we'll just have to see over time in terms of how all of this is handled. But I think ongoing, uh, certainly when there's different events locally, you see the compost group come out, they do a lot of uh, educational means we can certainly support those sorts of things for backyard composting and the like so we can kind of I think they really just um, we'll see how it shakes out at the CRD and what we're left with that's where we're at 
in my view. Uh, and thank you, Your Worship. Um, again, these are resolutions made by this council, so if this council wants to withdraw these resolutions, then it's certainly up to you to do so. I think Staff the, are looking for direction. Yeah, in my view, they stay there for now. They're just, I don't feel that they need to have any action on them. I think it's the case of once the CRD resolves what it's going to do, then we can see what is left for us as a community to deal with. It may be the case where um, do we set out sort of a yard waste collection type of yard down the road as our parks department get. I don't know if that's something that people are looking for is a place to bring their yard waste. It may be the case of there's been a lot of complaints coming my way about the burning uh, where people burn their yard waste but there's no alternative so what does the alternative look like so there's that conversation I don't like just taking off a resolution here that makes me uncomfortable for some reason but I think when there's new information that pushes one off then it makes it redundant in that regard Councillor Parkinson through your worship can we put these items that staff do not have to do anything with at the back of the list and say no action required at this time so they know exactly where those items stand yep and I think that's the update that we can put on it today is no action required at this it's just make it yep and then that'll just have the date and then when we see this again we can see what new information has come along okay so that takes care of a few. So that takes care of number four on, I'm just writing that down. Yeah. Uh, number four, number seven, number 11. Got it. Okay. So that puts us at number five, community sign project. We had discussions about a community sign, and it says here, see info and description, more info needed on cost, maintenance, and ownership. Any comments from council? Councillor Parkinson? Through you, Your Worship. I thought that when the presentation was given to council that we did have um, a couple of locations that were pointed out and that there was a cost associated with it all. I don't, I don't know if you kept the information from the presentation. Well, staff would have whatever information that was provided going back to a four of 11. I don't, I, mean, worship, I don't recall the presentation myself, but uh, we probably have information on the follow-up. But I remember a portion of dialogue was with regards to the inability for us to put a sign of that nature uh, because we have no property in that area and the right of way belongs to the MOT and there was brief discussion with them and they weren't really supportive of having a sign so it really it really never gained any traction after that okay. and there was also a cost associated as well that was for the Connie Road location that's we correct. don't have any property there that we can put it on so that sort of removes that piece and recall council wanting it centralized and then in terms of where it goes right councillor Parkinson and so that would be I think that was um, presentation was here and it was also with the Arts Committee when we had the Arts Committee and they had the design of the sign and what it was to look like and I thought that um, two of the other locations were going to be one was going to be um, by where the museum is where the welcome to soup sign is, as I recall, or down at the park here. I'm not sure. Would council like to invite Ms. Lures to speak on this? Okay. Ms. Lures, maybe if you want, since we're here and you're here. Thank you. Um, Actually, this has come to the forefront again. Um, Rotary is really interested and wants to take it on to do this. Uh, and Connie, the Connie Road uh, area was that the land is owned by someone else and district would have to purchase it and that sort of thing. Initially, under the arts and beautification, uh, the budget was about $10,000 because we were looking at uh, private people 
coming forward and uh, artisans coming and carving the posts. So that was costly. But after that, I did talk with um, Landmark and, and all inclusive uh, with um, the sign with the four by eight sign, two sided, and the carving. It was around two thousand dollars they were going to do it. That was last year, I think. Maybe I talked with them. I can't remember. But uh, there was that site, and also I'd met with staff uh, uh, with uh, Gerard LeBlanc at that time. And another location that we looked at was in front of the school, the property that uh, the district now looks after between uh, Edward Milton's Road and uh, the highway. And there was enough room in there to, to put the sign. So there are a couple of options. And then there was the hydro and that sort of thing. But I am going to make a presentation again to Rotary. We're talking about it. So there's still a possibility of that happening. And it's a community events sign. And also was for the district to put um, their signs up as well that weren't statutory, uh, statutory things that you had to put in the paper. And also if uh, fire, has, fire rating could be, be on there, road closures. So it was an all-inclusive community sign. And then it was going to carry through with the other signs in Souk, that's a sign that we don't have yet here at the park at John Phillips, that the signs, signs would all be similar so we, we would have a, a theme going through Souk with these four by, uh, I think there are 12 by 12 pillars uh, that were carved, uh, Souk Wild by Nature was to be on there, and it was, and in between it was going to have uh, pictures of souk or events, different, you know, what's wild by nature and what would be happening, like some souk fine arts would have pictures of the souk fine arts and that kind of thing. Okay, so we'll, we'll wait for, to hear from yes. the Rotary then. Yes. Okay, thank so you. thank you very much, Ms. Lourdes, um, for, for that, I appreciate that. Okay, so wait for... Okay, um, alternate housing forum. Uh, it says uh, to budget in 2018. I, I didn't. Councillor Casper? Yeah, um, when, when I was um, brought this forward, I had discussions with our CAO at the time, and it was suggested that we sort of hold off on doing this because of the timing. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I I think it would be an important thing to do because, um, you know, the term affordable housing can mean a lot to everybody, but I think the district seriously has to look at alternate forms of housing because they're allowing container housing in a number of jurisdictions. If it's properly engineered, it's serviced, um, it can look good. Um, that's one form of housing. There's uh, the provisions of having smaller, smaller houses um, on on properties, and um, maybe that's something that that we should consider. I had a, a very detailed discussion with uh, Councillor Alto from City of Victoria, and sh and she's. Um, I had agreed to actually come out and speak at, at a forum because she's done a lot of work um, uh, and, and investigation what they've done in uh, Portland and Oregon. So, um, you know, I, I, I still think something perhaps should be done. Um, I'm open to suggestions because I brought it forward. But I think, you know, maybe the more heads that get together on this, we could come up with some. Yep, I totally agree. I uh, think so as well. Um, Councillor Loggins? I agree. It's a huge priority, I think, out of the list of things we have here. That would be one that's most important to me, and I'm grateful that Councillor Casper brought that forward. Um, at the very least, I would say we make it part of one of your public forums, if we can, but if we're able to build it into the budget and create its own uh, forum and, and invite... Um, other councillors and and everyone to have that discussion. I think it'd be really important, and and I think we could actually come up with. Uh, there's no reason why we can't come up with actionable items from that forum. No. And, and and if I may, you know, we are we are allowing certain things to be done in our municipality that others aren't doing. 
So there's an opportunity for us to showcase some things that, that we've done, you know, the cottage housing, this type of thing. Um, in Vancouver, they've, they've, they've brought in laneway housing, which, which we haven't fully adopted, um, but, but we do allow for this standalone suites. And, and so, you know, maybe there's uh, some alternatives that we can uh, bring in. Um, I spoke to an associate professor at SFU and had a discussion ab about the work that this individual done over there. And uh, we didn't come to an agreement on coming over, but, but there may be an opportunity to bring somebody from the Lower Mainland to actually give a different perspective too. And, um, you know, I've been to, and I think the mayor's been to a number of affordable housing forums that have been conducted by the CRD, but, but it's very all-inclusive. Yeah. No, no one is talking about alternative forms of housing, something that's outside the box. And I don't mean that as a, a pun, but, but it's just that I think that, that if we can find a way to make it happen, not in a huge scale, but maybe a one-day uh, workshop or seminar, bring in some guest speakers who either do it at the hotel along those lines and, and just do it properly and right. And then invite uh, to see if there's um, some manufacturers that are either in Vancouver or uh, in Washington State. And I've done some research. Um, some of them actually like coming to these types of events so they can showcase what they've produced. So there might be an opportunity there. So, Yep, no, I think the time is perfect. Um, it says to budget 2018. So I think with UBCM just around the corner, there's a way to get some more um, contact information. We can put an actual number into the budget and then look for something like early in the year. And I agree, it should be a one-day forum, but I'd like to see its focus on souk specifically as opposed to Here's a, a very larger scale. Here it's like, okay, here's some things to do here. And there has been times where people who do manufacture the homes are more than willing to bring them out, and we can invite them to have them there as part of it all. So I think that's good. I mean, the um, health summit that we had, not this year, the year before, we had about 5,000 in the budget. I think we would need a little bit more for this just to draw in. But we'll see. I think there's time between now and, and budget deliberation. So this is this is good. I think we just keep it active as it is there. Um, I could probably say this for another time, but I'll just quickly say it. If we can also build into this uh, forum the piece that our staff did on community nodes, that might be a good addition to it and see where we can yep. fit some things in. Because I think there's there's plenty of time to plan it from there. Okay. Councillor Pearson. Yes, and I just want to capture uh, again what, what Councillor Loggins is, is, is headed to is that there has to be a link between affordable housing, alternative housing, and our OCP. We have to create another zone or potentially discuss creating a zone. I mean, it's, it's all got to be part of that same discussion. So the, the, the planning and zoning piece has to be integral to this as well because there has to be, if there has to be an appetite from a developer to want to go into this, this type of affordable housing, or even the district itself, you know, I mean, there's all kinds of cool art alternatives, but we also have to have mention of that in our OCP, so we can't leave that piece out. Thank you. Torcio. Yeah, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, just a reminder to Council that the OCP is now on hold, uh, as the planner in charge of the OCP is now back on planning duties due to um, a staff staff uh, leaving. So during our 2015 or 2018 five-year budget deliberations, we will be bringing that back in front of council, as well as the forum um, for alternative housing. We'll put a budget uh, number to that, and council can decide where in the priorities that lies. Yep, sounds good. Okay. Uh, number eight, um, this is from the Sioux Community um, Sioux Community something of Arts Council. I can't remember what the second C is. Uh, they requested a um, to Council to create a heritage bylaw, and I think that's on the list. Councillor Parkinson? Um, I would think that this could go into the OCP as well for the bylaw. As part of, the, part of OCP? Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Okay. So I'll just make part of OCP. Uh, the second one was to e examine possible grants and funding opportunities for the refur refurbishment of the community center, provide a report to council. Uh, it says requires council direction staff resource grant application. Councillor Loggins? 
Uh, thanks. I, I did ask for clarification from staff for this because it, it, I was confused about the community center um, bit because we don't have a community center and we have to be really careful of that language, I think. Um, so I think they were looking at just rewriting that a bit to reflect. Um, uh, I don't have the e Yeah, it should be the community hall. Sorry, I was just trying to pull up the email, but it might be too... Uh, thank you. Uh, through your worship to Councilor Loggins, we will change that to Community Hall. Um, it is important to note that the Community Association chose not to move forward with the Heritage Grant uh, that they had an opportunity to go for. So um, we, we are still looking for direction, as is, I think, Council is a little confused, as, or not confused, but um, where are we going to go with respect to a community center? Do we need one, don't we? And there's differing opinions amongst various groups in our community. And so this is an outstanding resolution of council. Um, and staff are asking for council, like, what do you want us to do here? But in this case, if it's for the community hall, it would be up to the Sioux Community Association to work with us as opposed to us stepping over them and we're refurbishing your hall. And that's the direction we're looking for. Okay. Councillor Ray? Uh, yes, Your Worship. I think this goes back I think this goes back to the um, uh, public uh, referendum question, mm -hmm. right? So I think that was one of the options was looking at uh, refurbishing. It was from the prior council uh, in terms of uh, the money that would go into developing those resources. Um, so it, uh, it wasn't all just the community center, and it wasn't all mm -hmm. about building a new building either. It was just mm -hmm. whether or not the community wanted to see us go forward with it. Mm -hmm. So this was just one of the options. That's from the prior council. Okay. Councillor Parkinson. So, through your worship, so does that mean that staff would not be looking into grants for them and that it would be put to the back of the, the list as no action required at this time? Is that what you mean? I'm, I'm sorry, are you speaking to me? Oh, yeah, um, no, no, I was just trying to put it back in context about um, looking at funding to refurbish the community hall. That was all part of a bigger discussion in our last council. Uh, through your worship, with, with the um, community hall and staff being overworked and not enough um, staff right now, I would think that we would put that towards the back and maybe help them find a person who would sit on their committee that is a grant writer like a number of the other committees all have in Souk. The museum has a grant writer, the uh, Arts Council has a grant writer, so maybe we can find or they can find someone to sit on their committee that knows how to write grants and where to look for them. Councillor Loggins? Um, I just want to clarify about the community center vision. Um, and that was that there, we were presented with a, a list of different options, but really there was only two options. One, three, one do nothing, I guess would be the third option. Uh, the second, to build, which is not feasible. And the third was not to support the community hall, but to support several different initiatives throughout the community to provide an, a community center uh, service through multiple facets, I guess. The community hall being one of them. So I guess I just want to clarify that, because we do have $150,000 in the budget, that 150000 is not, t as from the information I gathered from the community over five years, it's not for one organization, it's for multiple things. So I just wanted to clarify that. Yeah, no, I agree with that. So at this point, I think no action, but if we hear of anything, we'll pass it along. Does that work for everyone? Councillor Casper, like Councillor Casper did? Well, well it, be, it, it, it might be a good idea that if we contacted the community association and find out what, 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 what they would think should happen. Because there was a plebiscite and it kind of gave a pretty clear direction that there should be some action 
um, along this front and um, then then a committee was formed and and then a lot of people got involved but but my sense from the different people I've talked to is that that one of the most common themes or facilities that could accommodate a multitude of uses was a community hall that's an existing structure and uh, you know whether the debate is 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 it is it feasible in cost well it's a lot cheaper than building brand new so you know i i you know i'd at least want to talk to a potential partner before we decide to do nothing no, no right so. okay that's why we're having this um i'll le pass it to councillor loggins because she did sit on the committee and was there for when the final report to council came forward i sat on the committee and i i was part of i didn't just talk to community members i've spoken to about 600 people individually about this over many many years and i'm actually really upset that this message hasn't gotten through to council yet because the community hall cannot currently or with a renovation support anything more than it does right now so there are well they're not to the extent of what we need for a community center so they need renovations to put in a new kitchen and get more things there they need to move walls around and create more space uh, and utilize more space appropriately but that hall has a lot of things going on there a lot of great things going on there and we can't displace organizations because there's nowhere for them to go we have more organizations that need like if we had a second community hall that would be great <laughs> but the capacity of the community hall is not such that it could accommodate what we need for a community center so it does need a renovation and that would be a very important piece of the community center vibe that we need to happen in the community but it does not fill the gap that we have and with our community growing that gap's getting bigger and bigger every day So there's two pieces to this refurbish the hall and build another facility <laughs> um, well that was um, those were the other options if you will in that yeah. report that we were given was uh, create more storage space at our yeah. at our yard there was a instance, number of and things open there. up opportunities or support organizations and opening opportunities for meeting spaces um, work with the school district to have them build another gym but put pressure on them to get one in the community so there are all these little pieces that need to get done this is probably the most important one and uh, and if we can support the community association in getting this done it would it would fill a huge piece of that gap but it definitely is not uh yeah 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 it's not enough it's not enough i agree with you there so, uh, okay so what staff is looking for direction on what council would like to do so i see that there's still some outstanding councillor parkinson through your through you your worship um to the cao why didn't the um community hall go through with the heritage grant I'm not sure what that was or what it was for or how much they were asking for and did they require our help to get that uh, no I'm, uh, through your worship to Councillor Parkinson uh, my belief is that uh, getting the heritage designation would severely limit their ability to update the building to oh, okay. current standards with respect to electrical and all the rest of it so the grant would have been helpful but it wouldn't have done what they needed to do at that building in order to serve the needs of the community thank you okay, that makes okay so I'm looking to council here in terms of <clears throat> so that we can provide some clarity over to staff I'll be calling for public input pretty shortly here I just would like to finish off this point thank you um, 
Go um, ahead. If I may, um, well, perhaps we could just do a follow-up with the community association, either through our representative liaison person with the community association or directly to the board of directors, that we do have this outstanding issue mm -hmm. and that, you know, we we're interested in having a discussion as to, you know, do, do they want us to proceed with something? Because okay. in order for us to proceed, there would have to be a plan, there would have to be a budget, and there would have to go to referendum. Yep. To, you know, to get the money. You know, because it's not just going to fall off the trees. So. Uh, yeah, and, and thank you, um, Councillor Casper, and through your worship. Um, these are resolutions that are made by council, and so we're not asking council to debate the issues. What we're asking for is, is, is for council to let us know. Um, like, the, the community association didn't apply for the grant, and so now staff is saying to council, this is a resolution that you made, now what? Now, do you want to withdraw the resolution, keep it on, uh, put it to the back of the list, the top of the list, the middle of the list? Um, how important is this for you? I understand it's incredibly important for the community. And at the direction of council, as uh, Councillor Casper said, we need a plan from the community organization. You know, we need a plan, we need a budget, we need resources and staff attached to it in order to move this ball along. And currently, we don't have that. So if council wants to say, put that as a priority as part of 2018 budget deliberations in our five-year plan, we're happy to do so. OK, so I think the, the, the description is what still stands, that staff examine possible grants and funding opportunities for permission the community hall, provide a report to council, and just follow up with the get an update from the Sioux Community Association and bring it back at budget time. We have gone to a referendum on this and got overwhelming support for it. So where are we at with it? Okay, they didn't apply for one particular grant that fell under, under a certain category. So then, okay, then we keep looking. That one grant wasn't part of, it wasn't a condition, like provided that this heritage piece remain they, they there was an opportunity and i understand why it wasn't pursued now with that context but let's keep moving on and see what comes of it and your worship uh, just as a reminder normally with grants we need matching funds from the district so it really depends on the grant opportunity how much is available and how much council is willing to put up as matching funds so we can continue to explore uh, opportunities for mm -hmm. sure um, but but uh, we need to make that part of the budget deliberations. If we do find a grant opportunity, then where are the matching com funds coming from? And if there is no grant, then what we want to do is just, um, and I think if we do something where it goes to another referendum, then we need to be prepared, get our ducks in order so that we do that. We did it the first time, but it was so... Do you want us to continue working on this? Yes. That, in a, in a sense, was what the ask was at the time. And so we, we're not delivering well on that. Councillor Loggins? I would absolutely say that this is a priority. We had a referendum on it. We yeah. have funds set aside for it. We have tons of people in the community who need this. The community association needs this. Um, and they service so many organizations. I think it's, this should be one. To me, this is the most important one we have in here. Yep, I agree with Councillor Loggins. OK. Next. <laughs> Yeah, what time is it? Okay. All right, we'll get some public input on where on just where well, where where we're at. Uh, and if there's anything that are in the pages for us to consider as well. So I'd like to invite any member of the public forward at this time. Okay, I'd like to speak to what you were just talking about with the community okay. hall. Ms. Um, Lourdes, sorry, formality. Just 5526 five, Suit Road, Ellen Lourdes. Introduce Lourdes. yourself, thank you. Um, on this, whatever was handed out, which is very difficult to read, and, and please, next time, if the font could be changed so that someone can read it without a magnifying glass. But it does say in um, 2015, August 31, to, to, to no, no, wait a minute. 2015, a third or the ninth, 
Moved and seconded to endorse the establishment of the following committees and direct staff to direct terms of reference for the committees for council approval. And one of those was the um, Parks and Trails Advisory and the other was the Community Grant Review. Um, no, no, I'm sorry. Where is it? Well, it, well, that's the thing. It's, it's not, this is not lined up with this. Or, so it was to, to put the committee, uh, the community center committee, to establish those committees. But nowhere, I looked through this whole thing, and nowhere does it say that the committees were to stand down. So I wonder where that resolution was or where that motion was passed to have the committee stand down in the first place. That is what's happened, is this has not been finished. We were not finished. We were coming to a conclusion. We were coming to the point we talked with the Parks Committee. We were coming together because there was all the different issues, as Councillor Logan has uh, said, there was all the different parts that were coming together. And we had been talking to each other, but we hadn't had the opportunity to sit down and work it out together because there was plans forming from all the information that we gathered and it was never finished and that's, it can't be finished at council uh, because you don't have the information that we have gathered. And we met, we met with different group committees, subcommittees every week. There was a lot of work went into this and, and I don't know why it was just shut down and it made a lot of people frustrated and angry because we were coming to a point that we could actually work something out to establish what we we're talking about, all the nodes, bringing them all together to try to, to, to establish how these committees could work together with the community hall as well. And we were looking, we needed direction. Uh, there were some things that had to happen with the community hall. There has to be a, an architect's, uh, um, something or other that has to, has to be established first before they can do any work. And so those are the things, those, there were some recommendations that we were ready to make that council could then have worked with. And I think it, it behooves you to bring those committees back and let those committees finish their work. Then you will have the conclusion. Then you'll know what it is that the community needs and how we can do it. There was a lot of good people in the, that, those committees. There were people that are well established. We had four people from the Sioux Community Association in our committee. So there, it, there was a lot of people with a lot of knowledge there and a lot more knowledge than what's at the council right now because they've been here and been involved in it a long time. So I would say that, that if you want to bring that to a conclusion, the best way is to bring the committees back. Uh, going back to the alternative uh, housing forum, I think that's a good idea to have a forum on that because there's, there are different alternatives uh, around and about that we, could, that we should be looking at. We have to think outside of the box. The economy is changing drastically. Uh, housing costs are out of control. We hear it all the time. Um, somebody just dropped into our place today again, left, left New West, couldn't afford to look from New West all the way out to, to um, uh, Chilliwack, couldn't find anything to purchase. They, they came here. So, and people are not looking just for tiny houses or tiny, they're looking for land. They're looking for land to live. So we have to really talk about what we're doing, and that's OCP information. And I, I think some of your other information that you were talking about is OCP information too. Um, oh, let's see. What was the other one that I saw? Um, oh, uh, recommendation for climate act action change. Uh, opportunities for uh, local composting and thing, the, that sort of thing. I agree that should be done by individuals. That should be private enterprise. But the OCP language should allow that to happen within. And that's, so that's an OCP thing that should be uh, put in there so that the language is there so people can do it. With the correspondence, uh, the idea with the fire, firearms regulation bylaw, I believe when that bylaw came forward, it was just ridiculous because there were so many things that even a policeman couldn't shoot his gun off in this 
and I do know they have to do that sometimes. They used to shoot a wounded deer or whatever, but it wouldn't allow them to do it. So that really has to be reviewed. And we have a federal and provincial uh, firearms uh, bylaw, and I think that should be looked at. And before there's anything done with bow and arrow, there should be farmers, uh, should be part of that discussion because it's a serious issue with wildlife in this area, and especially with deer. If you want to have farmers, if you want to have food, and we saw what happened in, in Houston, I mean, that it's, the devastation can happen anywhere, so there is no food. So we have to make sure that we protect the farmers and the farmland. And uh, I guess that's, that's it for now. Thank you. Okay, to our CEO, or sorry, is there any other members of the public? Rob Pierce, 2407 Poplar. Um, I hate rules, bylaws, but I understand we've got to have them. But why are we making more when we don't even look after the ones that we have? Uh, you know, we've put six bears down. And I know this isn't the forum to talk about it, but I hear you guys talking about we've got to amend this bylaw, we've got to do that. We've put six bears down in Souk. We've moved them to their backyard. We take away their food. We put out the garbage early, and then we shoot them for that. You know, the, the crossbows and bow hunting, from what I understand on Whiff and Spit, that was the guy with the Christmas tree farm was getting pissed off, so we hired the natives to shoot the deer on his land. That's the story that I've heard. I don't know any more about it, um, you know. But why do we have these rules if we don't have the resources to enforce them? I think that's the bigger issue. I would like to share that one year soup put down 30 bears. I know, I know that six is really bad, but it's an improvement from the 30 that we were at about four or five years ago. I totally hear what you're saying, and that's why we need to consider what we're always, when we adopt bylaws, how the other side of it's enforcement. But we are improving when it comes to bear and protection of bear habitat. Ellen Lewis, 5526 Suit Road. I think the OCP review should be done now. I don't think that is something that should be put off. We're growing community and growing quickly, and every time uh, development comes forward, we're changing OCP, we're changing zoning. We, we haven't had discussion from, from the public what it is that they want, what it is, what our community, what they want our community to look like. Are we going to double lane are we going to just uh, or are we going to put in another road or what are we going to do or are we going to just all be sitting in the in the traffic for an hour every day to travel here and too so we need to have that discussion the ocp review has to come first before we do any more changes we keep changing the ocp we keep changing the zoning and say this doesn't match with that and and uh, and some of the zonings are so ridiculous the, the language in some of them is ridiculous uh, for for one zone you can do like I think that one that we did with um, um, Rob Rob Peters well it, this is about the OCP uh, yes. I'm just using this as an example the example where we he could he could do anything from have a garage to have a church in that in that zone we have to look at what we're doing we have to review that and make sure it works because Otherwise, council can't function properly. We can't function properly. The staff can't function because they're, they look at something and go, oh, well, you can't do this, you can't do that, but, but you can do this. It doesn't make any sense. So they don't know what zone to put it in or either. So the review has to come first. Please. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Are there, is there any other members of the public that would like to speak at this time? Nope. Okay. To our staff, please. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, just a point of clarification in res with response to uh, Ms. Lewer's <clears throat> concern that there wasn't a resolution passed with respect to the committees. If you take a look at the 2015 resolutions number 30, it speaks to the committees. <clears throat> and excuse me, it's a fairly long resolution, so I won't bother reading it, but it is there. And I would like to point Ms. Lewer's to that. Under, currently, we're looking at the uh, active or the incomplete resolutions. If you go to the completed, your Appendix C, 
page 14 of 64 at the bottom. Resolution number 30. It says RA3 Council Committee and Liaison Appointments, 2015-0309. Okay, that one, um, that looks at establishing them. But not to, the, the question that Ms. Lur has was a resolution that disbanded the committees or dissolved the committees. Um, Councilor Ray, please. Uh, yes, Your Worship. I believe those committees were two years and were supposed to ex end at the end of uh, 2016, so I don't think a resolution was required, but I, sta I stand to be corrected. The terms were initially for one year. Um, and that those terms of references were adopted at each committee itself at the very inaugural meetings. Our policy has that council members of the public can't sit for longer than two years. So I think that's the policy that prevails. Councillor Loggins, did you have anything further? I was just going to say that, that it was a term, and that's why it did end, and, and that committee ended on term. Uh, however, I do agree with Ms. Lewis that there was lots of unfinished business in terms of uh, the terms of reference for that committee, um, and it would be great to see that move forward in some fashion, especially if we can uh, make the community center facilities issue a priority. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we are moving on to item... 12, I believe. No, pardon me. Number 10, development variance permit. Report to, on options to streamline the development permit process is actively being dealt with by the development workshops, the second one being held tomorrow. Uh, number 12, uh, bylaw 648 development permit delegation bylaw. Staff were asked to review the report and provide alternative options to council at a future meeting. So are we just waiting for? We're waiting for the work uh, shops to finish okay. to inform this work. So we'll put development workshops there. Okay. And delinquent property taxes on mobile homes. But this was done. Um, Council received the report entitled Delinquent Property Taxes on Mobile Homes from the Director of Finances for Information that staff provide specific follow-up to Council on each file item at a later date on how to proceed with delinquent property taxes on mobile homes. I thought, isn't this actively been happening? Or? Um, three, or to you, Your Worship, um, we did produce a report that had uh, the options, I believe, at that time. and. You know, there are various options, and there none of them that pleasant to go through, um, and we just haven't done anything with them. It's it's just a, we can keep coming forward with a list every year if, if council would like. Um, they don't form part of the tax sale, so they don't ever appear in, in any of that publication. So it just would be a report for information, and if council was wanting any further um, action taken by staff, that we could do that as well but so far we haven't really brought the issue back other than that uh, one report back in so we'll just get the report yeah. on an annual basis yeah. okay okay so I'll put a notice with staff then mm -hmm. uh, so we have the next one there's an RFQ going out shortly it's from the Parks and Trails Advisory Committee that council allocate funds in the 2017 to 21 financial plan to conduct a feasibility study for a pedestrian crossing bridge crossing from Sun Rivers to Mamuel Creek Trail to the Souk District land or to the newly acquired Sea Park land next to Journey Middle School. And so that is actively going out. So we'll just wait to hear back on that. Councillor Parkinson. So would that just be through staff seeing as there's no Parks and Trails Committee? Well, that was the recommendation from the committee. So then I think Council would have endorsed it and now it's that's the action that staff has taken so then it'll come back to council once the RFQ finishes 
correct? Yeah, so it'll come back to council when the RFQ closes. Does that answer your question? Okay. Uh, the next one is that council directs staff to investigate costs. This is also from the Parks and Trails Advisory Committee. Direct staff to investigate its costs associated with pedestrian improvements on Sioux River Road. And council direct staff to investigate connectivity in the downtown core. So staff to provide a list of sidewalks that have been constructed working with the MOT on a sidewalk between Otter Point and Whiffen Spit. So we'll just wait to hear back from staff. Um, council proposed road closure and disposition of Sewell Road right away. Council directs staff to proceed with the preparation of a bylaw to close and remove the highway dedication to dispose of the undeveloped Sewell Road right away adjacent to 6290 The road is, st is being closed, is still being owned by the province, waiting for vesting order before can proceed. So we're just waiting on other parties then. Next one, sale of excess road right away, Maple Park Terrace, waiting for information from the applicant. So we'll just wait. Information handling and privacy policy. Um, it's quite long, you can see that there. And camera items being, are being released, you can create a project for doing the same with historical items, an application must be made. Anything to add there? It's just the FOI process. Um, Councillor Ray or there, to RCU. So if, if I may, Your Worship, uh, there was, if you take a look at the last bullet, uh, discuss, there was a discussion of having a Freedom of Information Day where the public could make requests for information without application forms or fees. Uh, this is all part of provincial legislation, so we needed to make sure that Council was aware that uh, Given its provincial legislation, that's not something we can entertain. Um, but staff are certainly responsive to FOI requests when they come in. Okay. Councillor Casper? Yeah, um, you know, I, I, I agree that, yes, it's all provincial legislation, but we also set a fee structure. That's our decision to set a fee structure. The province doesn't dictate that to us. So, um, you know, the reason I, I spoke on this is that, you know, I think in, in particular we have historical in-camera documents that have never been released publicly that have no um, um, uh, harm to the district if they were released or any other parties. And, 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 and I think that it's important that we are allowed after 10 years to release in-camera information um, with, with no repercussions whatsoever. So, so I think that, that um, we've got a plethora of stuff that's buried in vaults and I think the public has a right to know what previous councils were up to behind closed doors that was never disclosed when all the matters that they dealt with have been put to bed. So I, I just think that you know, it's it's public discourse. It's it's sharing of information, and and I honestly feel that that the the less bureaucratic process we put the public through to give out information, the better job we're doing as an organization, and the better service we're providing to the public. Maybe an inconvenience to staff, but you know what? We're here to serve the public, and so. I am strongly adamant about getting more information out to the public in the less cumbersome, burdensome process feasible. Okay, so that's so, clarifying your rise in report yes, on current yes. camera as well yes, as releasing yes, older. Yes. Okay. So, you know, really, and, and I'm going to harp on this till my last days as holding public office. It shouldn't come as a surprise. I talked about this the very first time I got elected to council, and that was in 2005 and six. So I think that the more information we get out to the public, the better off we are. And um, we're not subject to criticism, and um, I, I think that's a good thing in this day and age. So okay. anyway, I'll leave it at that. Good, thank you very much for thank that you. clarification. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, to our CAO, please. 
Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Through the Councillor Casper, Ca uh, staff are more than happy to provide historical information to the public. Uh, we will put a pro uh, request for resources in the 2018 uh, five-year financial plan to do so. Okay. Councillor Ray? <laughs> and you won't have to pay anybody anything. And I don't think I'd be taking a union job away from anybody. But I think, you know, really... Make it a committee. You know, I, I honestly think that this is not about hiring more staff. This is about... Your microphone. Less with less. Microphone. So, okay. I'll, but, I'll leave it at... Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Councillor Ray? Uh, yes, uh, Your Worship. I, I guess uh, I, I differ in opinion than my colleague, uh, Councillor Casper. I think any time you're expecting staff to go through documents and electronic documents and files, and it's going to take manpower. And, uh, you know, I have no difficulty um, when there's time and when there's resources to do it, but I don't think the staff need this pressure. At this point in time, there's enough on the plate for the next coming year. Okay. So I think um, enough said on that. <laughs> okay. Parks and Trails Advisory Recommendations. There's another one here. Council refer the following items to the Community Development Committee. So these, this committee never formed. Uh, there's a number of things here. So that's where they were to come to council. Um, there was a few things, a public consultation to examine the locations for an off-leaf dog park, develop a policy that outlines a process to follow one names in parks and trails and to provide a report to council. So there's two outstanding items there. And it was to go to the committee that didn't form. So in this case, they should just come to council. That's sort of what I said at the time early in the year that anything would come to a committee of the whole. Appointment of Board of Variants. Uh, we're still waiting for, for an, uh, uh, someone to take that position. So that's ongoing. Uh, we had something here on the elevator, letter received from a member of the public about a replacement elevator and it seems that the existing elevator was serviced and is being regularly maintained and it seems to be working. Periodically the door opens, like it just sort of moves on its own. I don't know why it does that. It's a little creepy sometimes, but otherwise I suppose it's functioning as it should. It's actually a lift. It's not an elevator. I think that's where for the two floors or for the floors that it service, that's probably why it was put in the way it is. It's not technically an elevator where it has the pulley system and or the hydraulics to move it. It's, it's a lift. So it's something, um, but I guess here it's 50 grand if we wanted an elevator in. So we can talk about that at, at budget time. Waste management bylaw, there was to be a report to the Protective Services Committee regarding a um, draft waste management bylaw for reclamation to council. Mayor Tate said the district wants to focus on education of residents as only, we only have one bylaw enforcement officer and the best ways to work for the public. So there was a delegation, I believe, at that meeting that asked where this bylaw was. So that was the comment that I made at the time. Um, unless council would like to see a bylaw come forward at some point. Otherwise, I think the education piece is, is our approach until we hire more bylaw enforcement officers. Councillor Casper. It, was this about people putting their garbage cans out? Yeah, and putting a bylaw. Night? So, so I, I, I agree with what you're saying. Education, that, that's critical because um, you know, I don't think a bylaw is going to do anything whatsoever. But if we have to clean up garbage and we know who the offending party is, well, then we have the power to bill them, put yeah. it on their tax notice. That, that's a clear direction. That, that speaks volumes compared to a piece of paper that's called a bylaw. Yeah, oh, and I agree. And if, if, if there's garbage out in the street because... People aren't thinking about when they put the garbage out and animals get in there and 
tear the neighborhood apart, well then, if there's a cost, then we'll find out, in my opinion, find out who did it and bill them, put it on their taxes. That'll smarten people up. They won't do it again. No, that sounds good. Uh, and then we have one from Bill Wilson regarding sewer placement for 6625. Staff to provide a report, and staff are still working to contact Mr. Wilson. So we'll just wait to hear more about that. So that, I believe, takes us to the end of this. Oh, no, there's more. Sort of starting over in the in the next section. So these are all in progress with various dates. So do we keep punching through these? These are 2017, these are 2017 outstanding. Yeah. No, we did just in 2016 outstanding. I see. These are 2017 outstanding. Got it. Okay. I know, uh, uh, one way council may wish to approach the in progress items is is um, to know that they're in progress and then focus on the other ones where we're needing direction. Okay. And That's then, sort of what I thought because yeah. a lot of these are, I'll just look for where it says that. So mm -hmm. some of these here, I'm looking for anything that is requiring of council direction. So number six in progress. Request for payment for ad space for survey regarding health care services. Souk support Souk Pocket News and the advertising budget for the CAO District of Souk motion 2017-167. Or that council supports Souk Pocket for the advertising budget for the District of Souk. That council defer the motion regarding the Pocket News until additional information is from the Souk CAO's communication strategy. So this here is requiring council direction. I'm oh, sorry, if I may, Your Worship, through to Council in general. Um, I'm going to be adding a bit to the CAO communication strategy, so perhaps we can defer this one until the full strategy in draft form comes back to Council. Do you know when that'll be, just so we have a date? I'm looking at October, late October, early November. October 20, okay. October 2017. Okay. The TELUS mural... Um, this came forward and it's about doing a, a mural on the TELUS building and then we, oh that's in progress. Okay, so never mind. In progress, in progress. Sorry, what number did you have? 14. Lot A fire prevention. So that's in works. That's been, we dealt with that in the at the special oh, meeting. Oh, pardon me, number 14. So that one was tabled that's the correspondence policy and so now with our new corporate officer that policy is going to be we'll expect it back at some point I'll um, talk to the corporate officer about some issues we'd had a previous previous <laughs> short conversation about it and just where my confusion with it lied and why it was tabled but we can have further conversation about that jeez okay in war that just came right out you <laughs> The, the correspondence policy. That's the one that I just found a bit overwhelming at the time. Okay. Uh, 24. 24, the financial plan, the dog park. Okay. The council directs staff to write a report on the feasibility of locations for a dog park, including options for site requirements, 2018 implications and process, and that the council direct staff to notify the community associated in the district is interested in the used fencing from the soccer fields. So we do have a report on on the dog park in different locations. That was done before. I was on that task force along with Councillor Pearson. And then the fencing I thought we agreed that we wanted to take and have at the yard. Councillor Ray? Uh, yes, thank you, Your Worship. This was just a response to an item that I put I had on the agenda about looking at uh, a possible site right beside the fire department. Okay. And so just as adding another site to the, the previous uh, report so and that the fencing would uh, certainly reduce the cost because when we looked at the dog park, 
uh, resolution from the previous council, um, one of the prohibitive factors was the cost of the fence. And so in my discussions with the Sioux Community Association, uh, as they're putting in the new fields, they offered the fencing. So it was just another idea, another place that possibly a dog park could go and that we could uh, cover it with the fencing because that was the cost. So do we have that fencing now? Because that field is well under construction. Your Worship, uh, we don't have the fencing yet. It's still there? As far as I know it is, yes. Okay. If so, I can, Your Worship. Um, they were going to be using it until certain uh, okay. sections were done. And then once they were finished, uh, which they thought would be the spring of 2018. Okay, so we, okay, so I think budget discussion. Councillor Loggins? Um, I do have a solution that wouldn't require much of a budget at all. Oh, what's that? And I'd probably get harassed for saying this, but... <laughs> I hope not. It <laughs> sounds... I haven't been yet. Not um, right now, and just bear with me, everyone, the park right over here is used as an off-leash dog park, similar to that of Dallas Road. John Phillips. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I know we did initially approach this as a fenced area that's off leash where dogs can play together and, and learn social skills together, which would make all the dogs here a bit better, uh, better off. And that does happen in this park. Um, it's a nice wide open space. You can walk your dog with a leash, without a leash. I think if we just keep it as it is, without a leash, add one more garbage bin, add two more dog bag areas at the other two garbage bins, one at each entrance, <laughs> problem solved. It's kind of like the spit. In a sense, there's dogs off leash there often too. I think our bylaw is your dog is to be under control. Mm -hmm. uh, apologies, Your Worship. Our bylaw says that your dog must be under effective control of the owner, and it doesn't necessarily it does not specify whether it's on leash or off leash. So the position of staff on this matter is that every single park we have is off leash or on leash. You have to have your dog under effective control. Right. Okay. Uh, your Worship, um, this is news to me about any plans for a dog park next to the fire hall. As far as, um, you know, any implications that I could immediately think of is when we use that spot for a lot of our pump testing and hose testing, so we're throwing water on a weekly basis up in that area. Um, our sirens and, and noises that we make on a daily basis as well as increased traffic where the volunteers respond in to actually that uh, door or the actual uh, driveway into the fire hall is just a concern. And I haven't seen that report myself either. Or, you know, so just a comment from the fire department. Back to Councillor Ray. Uh, yeah, it, it wasn't a, a, an official report. It was just an idea that was put out. Uh, there was um, more push in social media about getting back to a dog park. And I think it's actually people are wanting a place that's fenced so that they can let their dogs off leash because they normally wouldn't let them off leash and it was just somewhere where to go. Um, but uh, as long as it's back on the table at some point, uh, hopefully we can find a place. Uh, it's just that the property beside the fire hall is owned by the district, so it was a, an issue of cost. So just leave it with the budget conversation? Because part of it, this came forward as um, there was a petition, there was a series of things. Horseshoes, bike park, and a dog park. And they all took quite some time to be resolved. The horseshoe one finally got resolved. The bike park was proposed for John Phillips, and then it moved over to Sea Park, and that's been resolved. And then next in the queue was the dog park. And then the area Pine Park Place was looked at, which uh, the, which didn't go over well with the residents. So then, and, and then there's no parking, so you would have to drive to it or find parking so what about those that aren't able to walk greater distances and how would they get their dogs so that's where <coughs> this came up and so that's where it's always sort of moved around it just hasn't let the other out of those three things two had been solved and the one remained outstanding 
Yeah, and I, I agree. I I would love to see a fenced area, and uh, one of the best dog parks I saw was up in Cobble Hill, I think, um, and it's all graveled, so I, I feel like that has it kind of creates a f sense of um, more ownership of picking up your dog's waste. <laughs> I think when it's more visible like that and not hidden off in a grassy, grassy bush or anything, and it has nice benches and, you know, treed areas, and I think that I'm... It would be wonderful if we could uh, get that fencing and actually put it in. Again, just John Phillips Park is already used that way. So if we can put it even around the trees, it's away from the houses. If that's the way we want to go during budget deliberations, I think that would be great. So I'd keep it in there for that. <laughs> okay, so budget it is. Next, let's see here. Was that it? Wowzers. So, because these are completed, or they're on, oh, okay. So, comments from council on this? Are there any other pieces that you would like to add? One thing that I've thought about is this committee piece in terms of what to do, and then I thought, why am I continually thinking about this? So what I would like to do is put it out to members of council uh, if there's something that you feel that needs to be addressed by committee, then you have UBC, UBCM coming up. There's an opportunity to network with your peers. You have this information here to see if there's things that need to be delved into a bit more. Many of you are having ongoing conversations with members of the public, so why not take the next month uh, and then sort of as we look at our priorities and look at the budget, then come back with an idea on a committee that you feel you would like to go because uh, there's been several rounds where I put committees forward and they don't necessarily gain appetite or interest by members of council. So why am I forcing a committee on you that you don't want to sit on? Um, so why not, If why, I'll leave it with you and then you can come back and come up with a committee that you would like to chair and to put forward if it's something that you feel is uh, that you'd like to delve into further. Uh, I just sort of keep throwing it out there, why not form this or that, but it's really, this is a, a joint initiative. My hands are full with the work that I have, uh, certainly when it comes to healthcare and other advocacy work, so I can't sit on any other committees. It's like if I form them, I almost feel obligated. If no one else sits on them, then I need to sit on them, and it's just impossible to do that. There's just not enough hours in my day, so I'll leave it with, with the rest of you to come forward with an idea and then we can put forward the public uh, advertising and, and see what is needed for a staff resource, if any, and take it from there. But um, looking ahead, we do want, we had agreed that, for example, community in blooms should be every other year, so next year. What is that going to look like? Uh, how will we look at doing that? It's in the budget financial plan, so what is the plan for that? Uh, there's other ideas that have been floating around and and to go from there but I think just forming a committee because I thought it was a good idea is not the right approach uh, forming a committee just to meet to meet isn't a good approach either but really it should resonate from all of you so I'm going to take the committee piece and leave it in your capable hands Councillor Loggins then Ray um, thank you for doing that. I think it's important. There are a lot of things buzzing through my head. Um, but I do want to emphasize that in the, um, a couple of the committees that I was part of, um, it was incredibly um, important for staff to be there. And I know that it was a major burden, especially during that time of transition. Um, and even now, we are limited with our staff resources. But we couldn't have gotten anywhere without them <laughs> and it wasn't to have someone there to type but it was to have someone there to bounce ideas off of go through like they they know so much about um the inner workings of our government that 
we just couldn't have done it without them. So I think that would be a, imperative to any committees going forward. No, I totally agree. And that's why I think it would tie in well with the budget deliberations, because that's where when staff looks at, okay, this is what we need to keep the, the growth happening and business as usual. And then in addition, there's things like the OCP. We are down a planner right now. And with the, all the stuff coming through the development pipeline, that's why our OCP is on hold. And that's what our CAO said earlier. So do we put development permits and all those things on hold while we work on our OCP? It's a balancing act. So that's where I think we need to really strongly uh, consider that. So it's something, and maybe it is as fine, in which case any items you want to bring forward, we would bring. The notice of motion works because then it gives everyone time to think about what it is or to gather information. When items are just added to an agenda, there's ne no context necessarily. So then it's if you're looking for support on something, it's all on the spot. I mean, both can be done, but the notice of motion just gives time for conversation. It gives a public a heads up that this is coming through to the agenda because it hits the two. You get it in writing, so it's introduced at one, and then it's debated at the second. So it's two opportunities to get information and to have a fulsome debate when it's just added, sometimes for time and time sensitivity, it has to be done that way, but the context isn't there. So there's another option if there is something is just, okay, I don't want to do the committee, but I want this is important to me as a party, then you could add it that way too. And then it's just up to your peers to support it. But in this, when you add it quickly, there's no staff background. Nobody knows exactly what it's about. So you kind of scramble a bit. It just depends on what it is. But I agree in terms of particularly with primary health and how how that's really moving. I'm thankful to have some support there because it would have been very difficult otherwise. So that's why it ties in well with budget. So it's something to think of. You don't have to decide today. I just want to put it on you. Think about it. Think about what you'd like to see unfold and your portfolio and what your objectives are. Councillor Wright. Uh, yes, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, through to the CAO. Um, I was just wondering if, because um, I went looking for it in the minutes, uh, the Sioux Community Centre Advisory Committee uh, last spring in 2016 provided a report, and um, I was just wondering if I could get a copy of it. I think it's important given the conversation this evening uh, about the Sioux Community Hall because I think uh, uh, there's a bigger picture there from the recommendations that come, came from that committee, and I'd like to see that. Perhaps maybe we could all get a copy of it. Thank you. That's great. Thank you, Absolutely. Councilor Absolutely. I'll make sure that it's in your mailboxes tomorrow. Okay. Anything else from members of council? Councilor Ray? Or pardon me, Councilor Loggins? Sorry. One quick thing to follow up on that, just to give a bit more uh, context to that, is that the intent at the time was to provide council with a back and forth conversation, that report being the first piece of the back and forth, and then to continue having the discussions back and forth until we could consolidate some ideas. Um, so if we can, I know we don't have the committee now, but if we can work on it going forward with that kind of uh, mindset, I think that we can get somewhere with it. Anything else on the resolutions from anyone? Okay, thank you very much, staff, for all of your time and putting that together, and I hope that gives you a bit more clarity on that. So I would just like, um, I don't think we need a motion for that, because we've kind of gone through it, right? We've received it. Okay. Is there any further public input on? No. Okay. So new business, um, discussion of Atlantic salmon in Puget Sound release or release of Councillor Pearson. Yes, and I, I, I did make a notice of motion. I think I copied some, some of you on that. Is that um, I'd like to, the council to consider um, some of the, the recent publications, and I'm trying to follow as much as I can, that it's considered a natural disaster and, uh, of, of huge proportions. And as many of you know that, you know, salmon is one of our, you know, our, our mainstays of, of recreation as well as economic driver here in Sioux. And if there was a spill, because that's what they're calling it, a spill of, of Atlantic salmon in our harbor, if we happen to have things, it could be devastating to our natural salmon stock. Because they're, you know, when they, when they escape, they know nothing except 
to survive, which means they start eating fry and all kinds of things. And, and, and again, I'm not a scientist. I'm just trying to follow what, what's online. So um, what I was hoping to do tonight was have a discussion um, with you uh, and, and put an awareness piece forward uh, to perhaps see if there's an appetite uh, to bring this forward to a regular council meeting to, for you to think about what does it mean to our community salmon farms. I'm of the opinion that we should, Souk should be a salmon farm free community. And I think our basin is so small and so contained that if there was a spill of that size and there was a salmon farm in our, in our harbour and it happened to coincide with the release of the fry from our important hatcheries, um, they could be gobbled up um, by, by the by the, the, the farm salmon. So um, it's something that I would like each of you to sort of consider and, and, and perhaps try to get it on our regular council agenda for, for some discussion. I think there's some staff input. I, I don't know where we would go for scientific uh, information because you know our, our government is being sort of very, very quiet on the issue. But you know, when you when you start reading around, um, some of the experts, uh, the the Suzuki Foundation and things like that, are saying that you know it's potentially a huge issue. So, anyways, I just wanted to bring it to everyone's attention. Um, if we can get it on the regular agenda, um, I would I'll, I would I will be putting more forward, forward a motion that that Souk be a salmon farm free area. So, uh, I don't know whether that, that, that we will we will get input from the public. What's that? I'm um, currently operating. I'm not sure that we have any. So, but we, yeah, not that I know it's regulated. It, it's a provincially regulated. There's a lot to it. It's just that I think that I would really support land-based salmon farming. I mean, it's a food source, and and I think that we have to start. Um, it, it's it's a mixed bag of things that are going on there. It's a federally regulated fishery that that is our wild stock provincially regulated fish farms and the one that where what's caused the all the trouble is an American one which is in close proximity to us so I mean we don't have any jurisdiction over them anyways but I think that somewhere in in in, in our community in our in our coastal communities somebody has to start the discussion and I and I'd like that to be Souk I think that you know there's there's got to be more discussion around it so but you was, could uh, make a recommendation like the committee of the whole like yeah could do a recommendation now to council so rather than introducing a notice of motion at the council meeting for the following council meeting you could just do one now if you liked and and that was the point of tonight being it on the committee of whole yeah. was for, for each of you to have your your input um just to, just to see what your what the appetite is around the table about that discussion whether you'd like it to take it forward or not um I, it, it's very important i think that uh, it's a personal issue for me because i i you know I support the salmon enhancement, the souk salmon enhancement, the good work that they're doing. But it's not just our community; it's all the communities up the yeah. coast, right? This is, uh, you know, if you start reading some of the literature that's out there, they're considering this a natural disaster. Well, I can see why. I mean, it's essentially no. I, I agree with you, Councillor Pearson, and I'm glad you raised it. Is that it's essentially an invasive species that is being put into our waters and then it feeds on all of our wild stock that are already threatened for many different reasons. We, um, we have a, a very fragile ecosystem with our salmon and, and the stocks are, are diminishing at an alarming rate already. So they don't need another bump. Um, and, and that's the point of me bringing it forward. No, for and our volunteers at, at both hatcheries and the Interpretive Centre have done tremendous work over the years. Yep. So uh, I also would like, um, uh, and I'm going to make a motion now, to, uh, to bring it to our regular council meeting and, and then advertise it on our agenda so that maybe, and I will contact some of the people from Souk Salmon Enhancement and some of the people that would come to speak to it. Because I'm not really sure where we can go, but I think that there needs to be some momentum from yeah. a coastal community like ours. It's an extremely important resource to us. So, so do you want to make a motion then for, and then this, the Committee of the Whole will just flow to the next, to next week's uh, council meeting? Yes. Okay. So the motion be that Souk be a salmon farm free community? Yes. Does that I, I don't know if we work? can make that motion here as make a recommendation. It'll be a recommendation. A public discussion that uh, salmon farms or the escapement of salmon farm fish could be harmful to our environment. I don't know that we can make a motion at this 
to the effect that it's a salmon free. I'm not sure that I was getting there, but I, I will make that motion. At a, at Sorry, a, yeah, yeah, salmon farm. Yeah, that's why I need the language. Water-based salmon farm. Suit to be, suit to prohibit water-based salmon farming. Yes. Is that suit to prohibit? prohibit well, I think you know, and, and, you know, and not to sort of get to the uh, to the next part of it. We have a lot of land that's considered marginally agriculturally viable for land-based farming for traditional foods livestock and and growing things but um you know going to the next step maybe we could pump water ocean water to some of these areas where where that is that's that's agriculture or aquaculture or i'm not sure what you would do so maybe some of these lands that are are, are not viable in the current farming status could potentially do this. I mean, I think there's some discussion around that. Okay. So for now, though, suit to prohibit water-based salmon farms. That's yes. the recommendation. Yes. So, yeah, there's no seconder because we're in committee right. of the whole. Uh, and then that will come to the regular council meeting. Does that language work That's with you? That's good for me, yes. Okay. Councillor Ray? Uh, just a comment. I'm thinking if, um, if we're wanting to have that broader discussion, mm -hmm. uh, it probably should come to a committee of the whole. Because our agenda for a regular council meeting allows 10 minutes for public input, so uh, you know I'm just putting it out there that I, I think it's a I think it's absolutely a necessity to have that conversation, but if we want to have it as a public input session, I think a committee of the whole might be the better way to get that public input. I'd really like to hear from some of the some of the local experts, as well as maybe they could drum up some some bigger experts. I guess is what I'm. Thinking. Okay, so, I mean, what we can do at the regular council meeting is then also refer it to a next committee of the whole with inviting the da-da-da-da-da, and then in the meantime, Councillor Pearson can talk to whomever, and then we'd be looking at an October date for a broader conversation. Perfect. Thank you. Does that work? So that yes. way it's all covered off and the conversation gets flowing anyway out of here. Good. Thank okay, you. Okay, good. Okay, uh, so that is the end of that. So we'll just call for a motion to adjourn the Committee of the Whole. Summon. Moved by Councillor Ray. All those in favour? Opposed? Motion's carried. We do need to reconvene our in-camera portion of the meeting, so we'll just require a few minutes just to manoeuvre technology and such. <laughs>